بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعداءهم دعاء for day 13 of the holy month of Ramadan we recite إنت اللهم طهرني فيه من الدنس والأقدار وصبرني فيه على كائنات الأقدار ووفقني فيه للتقى وصحبة الأبرار بعونك يا قرة عين المساكين we'll focus إن شاء الله on the first line of this dua in which we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to purify us from impurities and filth the question is, don't we all already do this to ourselves? Don't we all already take care of our personal hygiene? Now the answer is perhaps that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're asking from Him here not to purify us from physical impurities, but rather spiritual impurities. These impurities come from the sins that we, God forbid, may commit. When Prophet Lut Ali of the Salati was salam warned his people from committing this evil sin that they were committing, they responded to him in a way that shows this reality. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quotes it in the Holy Quran when he says, وَمَا كَانَ جَوَابَ قَوْمِهِ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ قَرِيَتِكُمْ إِنَّهُمْ أُنَاسٌ يَتَطَهَّرُونَ That the response of the people of Lut was nothing but take these people, these believers, out of your society, out of your community. Why? Because they are people who are purifying themselves and who are constantly cleaning themselves. Now, were they not physically clean people? They probably were. But this is not what they were talking about or referring to. Rather, they were probably scorning Prophet Lut and the small amount of believers with him of being pure in the sense that they were away from these sins, especially that main sin that they were committing. That was seen as something evil to them, that these people are clean. They purify themselves. Take them out of your, out of your community, out of your society. That's the reality. Somebody who stays away from sins is somebody who is clean, somebody who is pure. The Holy Quran, in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us and commands us, وَلَا يَغْتَبْ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا That you must not go gossip and backbite one another. Why? أَيُحَبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتَا فَكَرِهْتُمُوهُ He says that we should not backbite. Why? Do one of you want to Eat. Does one of you want to eat the flesh of his dead brother? That's something that you despise. Meaning, somebody who gossips, the reality of this sin is like eating flesh, eating the flesh of your dead brother. How disgusting is that? That's the reality, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in this verse, of backbiting. Every good deed has its own reality and embodiment and something that it uh, represents. And the same thing, every bad deed has its own reality. So we may see it as, for example, just lying or sinning or, or backbiting or stealing and so on and so forth. But there is a much dis more disgusting and evil and filthy reality to each and every one of these sins. And perhaps that's what we're asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here to purify us from these sins and the effects that these sins have on us, inshallah. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته